Hello. Well, thank you very much for the introduction, and thank you for seeing me here in Copenhagen. So, so this is the capital. I mean, I just flew in from Samsø, and I mean, who are you, you guys out there? How many of you are from Copenhagen? I'm please raise your hand. Oh, this is not the capital. All right. How many are from Samsø? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we have one from Samsø. So that's nice. I mean, I'm probably representing the outskirts of Denmark in many ways. I will, I'm going to tell you a story about what we did on Samsø. In, at the Kyoto conference, uh, Mr. Sven Augen, our former Minister of Environment, he announced that he would change the emission of CO2 by 21% in Denmark. He would cut down 21%. He was followed by Sweden and by Germany. That was a brave decision. It was also a brave statement at the Kyoto conference. He came home to Denmark and then he actually announced that he would, he would appoint an area, an independent municipality that would fulfill this ambition. And in 10 years, prove that it was possible by today's technology, proven technology, by today's policies and subsidy programs, and by the aid of what, we, what he then called widespread public participation. I don't know if you know what that means. I mean, how many, how, how, how high a percentage of the population is, is then meant to be widespread public participation? I mean, in a, in a land of folk high schools and democracy, the, we probably have some ideas about that. But what, what happened here is that we actually won this competition on Samsø, to the great surprise of the, many of the local citizens. So when we had the first meetings on Samsø, I mean, people kind of said, this is, com this is from Copenhagen. This is probably going to fail. <laughs> so... I'll take you through the story of, of Samsø. Samsø. Samsø is kind of a common plus community. I don't know if you understand the, the, the sentence, a common, the commons. It's an old phrase. It means something that we share. It, in the old days, it was some grassland to share the cows. So for the gra grazing of the cows, it could be water, it could be fishing, it could be how to pick, pick up forest, uh, firewood for, from the forest. So the commons was kind of an, it was a life connection to be part of a community. So Samsø is a common plus a community. This is, I mean, my island is a beautiful place. Probably the most beautiful place on earth. <laughs> How many of you have been there? Well, that's quite a lot. So you know that already. I don't have to tell you about that. So Samsø is, is a pre precious place. We, need, we, we want to, to take care of this place. I live there and I, I'm born and raised on Samsø. I don't know if you can see that. I have this little, I'm, I'm a stamina, I have some strange in my body. I'm, I'm a local. And we, because I'm a local, I'm also, I'm, I'm also responsible for my own locality, which is interesting. I'm, just, I'm not just running away. I'm not something bad coming from Copenhagen and then leaving again with some fancy, smart ideas. But I'm a local guy, and, I, and, and people actually usually rely on, on their own kinds here. So this image is a picture of the situation we wanted to be in, because I don't want to bore you with all the technical details, uh, because we already did this. In 10 years, we transformed the entire island to be self-supplied by renewables. We've done that. We, have actively, we are exporting energy from Samsø today, and every citizen on Samsø has a minus 3.7 tons CO2 emission. That's pretty good. Don't you think so? And we did that with proven technology. We, we did it by the today's policies, and we did it with widespread public participation. And what, that's, what does that actually mean? Well, this was an image of, of, the, of the master plan, of the ideas we had for this transformation. And when we launched this idea on Samsung, saying to them, we are going to build some big, very big offshore wind turbines. Everybody said, in your dreams, it will probably never happen because it's too complicated, we can't do things like this. It's too expensive, and no, no, it, it's not possible. And five years later, these turbines were up and running, and they were for six months the biggest offshore turbines in the world, and we did it. We also paid for it, and we own them today, which is interesting. And this is what I'm going to talk about here, because what does it mean that we actually are doing the, 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 the technology development? It's not an engineering project. I, don't, I, I need to know how many engineers do we have in the room? There's a few engineers. You know, I have a problem with engineers. They are the most arrogant people I know. <laughs> I mean, they know everything, and if they don't know it, they can figure it out. But on the other hand, I also like engineers. I love them because they can do things. But we shouldn't let them do everything, 
we should kind of have this interaction and talk about culture and beauty and affection and all the other things also, because engineers, they don't know much about that. <laughs> Sorry, maybe you do. So sustain sustainability, what is that? It's to sustain things and to be able to do it. Are we able to do this? Sustainability, are we able to sustain things? I think we should question ourselves every now and again if we can do it, and no, not just leave it to technology and science that we can ask these questions. This is my island. If you haven't been there, it's 30 kilometers from north to south, but it's also several cultures. You probably think that Samsung is a little charming, romantic place where everybody knows each other. Don't you? <laughs> but we don't. <clears throat> we do know each other, but we don't like each other. All of them. <laughs> so if you see on the down in the, in the bottom of the picture, we have the South Island. In the center of the South Island, we have the capital, Tranebjerg. This is where the town office is, the mayor's office is there. We have the banks, the Wall Street, the downtown, Red Lake, the Light District, and this is the roaring capital of Samsu. <laughs> Copenhagen is nothing between. I mean, so, so this is where the civilized part of Samsu is, the, 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 the down place, the, the southern place. Then you have a jungle in the middle. In the old days, the jungle was full of wild animals and rapists and robbers, and it was a really dangerous place to go. And people didn't want to travel from north to south because it was dangerous. There was no reason to do that. In the North Island, we have a little isolated community of four or five hundred people. And actually, there's a lot of documentation that these people are different. <laughs> we have the doctor's signature saying that they, are, they, they have a high percentage of inbred families. <laughs> I don't know if I mentioned that I'm from the South Island, <laughs> just to, to be sure about this. So when every year they invite from the North Island, they invite the people from the South Island to go to the North Island to talk about democracy, because sometimes they feel a little bit let out there in the dark, and that the central administration are not listening to what happens in the outskirts of Samsø. And it's only 15 kilometers from the capital to the North Island. And I think that, is, that qualifies for democracy and the outreach of, of democracy. Who are we when we're talking about democracy? And how do we embrace the entire community? I don't think we can actually speak in longer distances than 10, 15 kilometers and still understand the same message. This is Denmark. I mean, you can see Copenhagen, obviously, is not in the center of Denmark. <laughs> but Samsø is. We, of course, people from Samsø know this for, for, for sure. We are the center of Denmark. You can see that for sure. Now, sorry about Bornholm people. Uh, anybody from Bornholm here? No, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> so this is European Union, the new European Union with the new member states. <laughs> As you can clearly see, Samsø is also in the center of Europe. <laughs> this is a sure fact. We've known that for ages also on Samsø, that we, this is a fact. <clears throat> and we've been awarded also, we have had the European Union's uh, uh, the, the, the Best pra Practice Award, and we've had a lot of awards from the European Union, so they know about it. It's just in Denmark we don't know it. So this is the world. <laughs> <clears throat> and apart from the joke, I think that this is maybe a message that you can bring home, that you are all in the center of the universe. And the next clever step you will make, you will make from your own center of the universe. We cannot blame the Chinese or the Americans to be the reason for climate change and all the other things unless we have checked out what we can do. So the next really important and clever step will t be taken from home. And this, I think, is really interesting. This is what I'm, I'm going to talk about. The vision of a bright future is maybe to talk about what we can do, not what they can do or what the world can do, but what we can do. And then think very much about who are we talking about this. The including we, not the excluding they and us, uh, me or you, but we. This is difficult, because this is also a great responsibility that we want to talk to us, not to them. It's easier to blame somebody than to be responsible. So, I created a new word for this. It's not that I'm, I can't spell, but commodities is my word. Commodities is commons plus communities doesn't exist, but maybe it can be a new valuable word for this little central we, including the commons and communities. I need sometimes to talk about how we open this discussion. The opening of discussion is to focus on what we want to talk about, because it's so easy to talk about climate change in a bigger perspective, but it's very difficult to talk about climate change in my own perspective. 
because then all your bad habits will occur, and then all your relations will occur, and you know somebody that travels too much in an airplane, and you have a lot of habits, and you eat a little bit too much meat, and there's a lot of things here. So let's sit down and talk what we can do. So this is kind of the, the image of a campfire. It could sit down and gather around people this, around this campfire and talk about what we can do. And we is then also the engineers. It's also the green hippies, the teachers, the farmers, and the industrial leaders, people who we don't really relate to, but who are very important in society. We bring, need to bring them to sit down around this campfire to talk about what is important. So this is the image. And then define the person you need, or the key persons of this development. Find the blacksmith. In the old days, the blacksmith. I don't know if, are there any blacksmiths in here? Any strong blacksmith? No. This is a rare species today. So maybe this is why we have climate change, because the blacksmith was a guy who he could change things in the old days. He could bend steel and he could do things we really needed. So find the blacksmith. He's the guy, he's the key to solutions. And he's the innovator also, because if you come up with a problem and ask him, how, how do we do with this? He'll probably do his utmost to, to find a way to do it. So define the blacksmith. What do you think the blacksmith on Samsung said when we said, we are going to change the whole and an entire community to 100% green energy in a time span of 10 years? Are you on? He, in the first time he said no. Because he, he was already busy with oil heating systems and all the existing technologies here. He was good at that and he knew that was, that was his bread and butter. So why change that? So we needed to go home again and I called some of my friends who are engineers and said to them, do me a favor, calculate how much it takes to make a district heating plant on biomass, how much it takes to make a foundation and a construction for a wind turbine, and all these things, and figure it out in man hours per year, and then we can show the blacksmith the figures. And maybe he will be interested. So we did, and at the next meeting, we asked the blacksmith, do you think green innovation is good? And he stood up in the middle of this meeting and said, green innovation is a really good thing. <laughs> and why? Because we have showed him the what's in it element for his business and for himself. Now it was profitable and not just a hippie thing from Copenhagen, but it was hours of work and it was a salary and an in income from his company. Then we called the, the farmers. We had some really strong farmers over here in the corner and said to them, will you deliver the fuel for the district heating plant? And they said, depends on the price. Do you have any farmers here? No, we have a lack of farmers. This is the problem, the farmers are not in these meetings. But we need to ask them, do you, do you want to deliver the fuel for the district heating? And the farmer said, yes, if we can agree on the price. And of course, oil prices at that time was about $30 per barrel. And I mean, 10 years later, it was $130. We didn't know that then. But we had a feeling it would be like this. So we could securely make a deal with the farmers and then say to the, to the house owners, we will give you cheaper energy than you had before, and it'll be green. Do you, do you copy? Is that okay? And we had the contract with the farmers, we had an appointment with the blacksmith, and then we could hand it over to the house owners and say to them, this is a done deal. All right, let's go green. We also kind of, we had to cool down the fly in Copenhagen, because we have these tourists that come over in the summertime, and they enjoy very much to, to, to spend their holidays on Samsung. They love this island, they think it's so beautiful. That's only because they haven't been there in the wintertime. So they buy a house, they come over, they buy a house, they move the whole family from Nørrebro to Samsø. And they think that now my kids are going to grow up in harmony, organic, it's going to be very, very nice and very beautiful. So this is really cool, everything is cool here. So when they wake up in reality and hear somebody saying that now we're going to make this entire island green, they kind of sign up and say, yes, we'd like to go green. But then all the farmers over here, they think, yeah, that, what, what, that's what we thought. It's a hippie project from Copenhagen. <laughs> so so then, then, I mean, this is a vulnerable thing. So collecting these people is about differences and networks. So we have to kind of knit, knit, knit this network in a, such a strong and, and committed way that we actually do engage ourselves with the, with the hippie from Copenhagen, with the farmers and the engineers and the politicians and the, and the citizens who have kind of the ability of being key persons for this development. So it's about communication and democracy and about feeling home. This is we and not them. So communities is also diversity plus people. Diversity is that I accept that I need to approach 
the person I used to be in an opposition to, which I definitely didn't think I'd never work with or ever work with. But now I'm, I'm working with these guys, and actually we are contributing to the same project in a very positive and very progressive way, and it seems to work. It has worked. We did the job on Samsu. So we're actually in the right spot, doing the right thing. And this is what, what we're looking for everywhere. I just received this book. This is from China. It's called Tales of Danish Zero Carbon Life. If you see the image on the, on the cover of the book, it's a circle of people. They are trying to discover what is the key to this success. How did you do it? Because we can do, we know how to do top-down in China. We, know how, we know, how, know how to organize structures, but we haven't covered, we haven't solved how we open up the door to the cupboard where people live, and how we engage people, make them invest in their future life, make them co-responsible for the development of the future. But they are tapping into this story now, and they use this story as a learning lesson in China, as they do in Japan, as they do in America, as they do anywhere, actually. So I think the message from this is, we need to look for beauty. We need, we need to look for culture, and we need to look for our next cooperative partner in this. And we never know who it is. It might be your neighbor, you haven't even talked to him about it. It might be somebody that you haven't met yet. But anyway, you have to look for somebody in this circle that together with you will make this next voyage towards a greener society. It's about communication, it's about beauty, and it's about people. Thank you very much.